Eddie Stobart trucks and trailers have been pounding Britain's roads for over 40 years. Another day, another mile. It's a high pressure industry, are we? They cover the distance round the earth 24 times a day. Here we go, here we go, let me go. Yes! The brew must get through. <laughs> a firm fixture on the roads, they're also taking to the rails. And the sky's the limit after a £100 million purchase and redevelopment of South End Airport. I've seen the vision right away, I've seen the opportunity, and I've driven it through. But whether it's trucks, trains or planes, hitting deadlines is the name of the game. Today is a serious race against time. Don't you stupid woman. Easy. Coming up on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, chilled driver Fiona Saltjack has the drop from hell. I've got the doors open, but I can't get the stuff off. Driver Eddie Murphy's down in the docks. I feel like Stowe is a massive port, and I didn't know how he got out. And one Stobart <laughs> spotter comes face to face with the trucker of her dreams. I'm no George Clooney. I'm just a low driver. Ah! Oh my God! <laughs> Eddie Stobart make a delivery every five seconds. Each year, they deliver three million pallets of chilled foods, making it one of their busiest divisions. Its army of 500 dedicated truckers includes Fiona Solchak. Fiona's an elite member of the band of trucking sisters. I'd wear my heels to work if I could. <laughs> She's only one of a lucky 13 female truckers in the whole company. Today, Fiona's being dispatched from her home base in Newark to the witness depot. Here, she will drop her usual trailer and pick up another loaded for local deliveries. Witness, new territory for me, so go find out what's in store for today. It's 5 a.m., time for Fiona to meet her planners for the day. They're all stores, yeah? They're all stores. Stores? Yeah. They're all stores. Right. Fiona's used to delivering to warehouses. Today, she's delivering to shops, which is virgin territory. And what do we do when we get to sorts? What do we hand over? Because uh, it's obviously nothing like what I've done before. Is it just like my chill trainer that I'm using? Yeah, like I said, the trailer um, should still be on 145, just down the bottom there. I'll be ringing in about half hour then. Yeah, if you have any problems, <laughs> I have these four drops to do at shops, which obviously we've never done before on the chill. And they've given me these funny red sheets, risk assessment. I was like, really? The risk is me taking this load out, surely? We've got to find this trailer that I've been told was down there, then up there, now it's back down there again. Locating the trailer she's been assigned is like looking for a needle in a haystack. This site is huge compared to Newark. Uh, Newark's tiny. Witness is 26 times bigger than her usual Newark depot. As Fiona homes in on her trailer, she's in for a surprise. Oh, my God, it's a dinghy. And it has a tail lift on the back, which I have no idea how to use. <laughs> it's not just the size of the trailer that's different. The delivery is stored in metal cages. Looks very different to the normal trailer I'm used to. <laughs> Normally, the stuff we carry is on pallets and wrapped up and nice and tight. This is things are on wheels. <laughs> We're going to move. As she hooks up the trailer, Fiona spots some fan mail. The trailer loves me. That's nice. Hopefully, it'll look after us today. <laughs> it's nice to know the trailer loves me. I love it back. <laughs> Mutual appreciation society over, Fiona's got to hit the road. It's now 5.15 in the morning and Fiona has to be at her first drop by 6. We've got 45 minutes. <laughs> we better get moving. And we'll have to keep an eye on time as well today because obviously it started quite early this morning. The clock's ticking. Fiona's only got eight hours of her shift left. But first, she's got to find a way out of the depot. Because we don't know where we're going, clearly. <laughs> There's some gates over there. Obviously, no one's answering at that gate, so I'm just going to go to another one. We'll try that way. I think we're going to get out of the damn depot. <laughs> 20 minutes later, and Fiona finally escapes.
Fiona's run will take her from Widnes, 30 miles north to Bolton, where she will be delivering to four shops before heading back to Newark, a journey of more than 160 miles. With clear roads ahead of her, Fiona finally gets to her first drop. Tesco's. It's a big moment for Fiona, her first ever shop delivery. I hate this bit because this is the bit where I don't know how it works, you know. The gate has just opened, but I don't know if we're supposed to just drive down there or... Unfamiliar with the entrance, Fiona decides to grab the bull by the horns. I'm just going to drive down there. I'm late anyway, so they can't say no. Reversing into a small loading bay with a trailer three metres shorter than a usual one has its benefits. Yep, the trailer moves a lot quicker than the other ones. <laughs> it's cold, the sun hasn't risen, and Fiona is in the dark. Hey, right, I haven't done these shot drops before. Ah, OK. And no one showed me how to work that thing, so right, I hope you know. <laughs> Having made it to her first destination, she's got to unload her trailer with a mechanical tail lift, something she's never come across before. So she turns to the warehouse staff for help. Uh, have you switched, moved it down here or connected it? You speak an absolute foreign to me. They oh, haven't right. showed me. Either. They haven't showed me how to use it. It's becoming clear that something is amiss. The tail lift is dead. It needs to be powered by a cable from the truck which connects it to the trailer. Fiona's been in the loading bay for 15 minutes, and the store manager's anxious for the delivery. Is it on the back of that one? He wrote a number on the back of one of these pieces. Fiona gets on the phone to the planning office. I've got the doors open, but I can't get the stuff off. How do I use this tail lift? In the middle, there's a dial, and on the right, there's a dial. Unless the tail lift can be sorted, this load right. looks destined to stay on, on the, the trailer. trailer. Yeah. OK. Where's the lead? No, no one mentioned anything about having to need a lead or anything. Without the lead, the mechanical tail lift can't be powered. And if the tail lift can't be powered, then the trailer can't be unloaded. Coming up, Fiona's day from hell takes a turn for the worse. This trailer that loves me, he doesn't really love me anymore. And driver Eddie Murphy is racing against the clock. We're struggling to get it. Pressure's on. familiar green and red livery of Eddie Stobart trucks have been a fixture on the road since the 1960s. To some, they're as British as Sunday dinners. But there's a new colour on the Stobart block, the blue and white army of the rail freight division. First launched in 2006, they're now expanding the rail service, and for this to happen, they need more rail containers. At Felixstowe docks, after a 31-day sea crossing from China, the first of 270 brand-new curtain-sided rail containers are being unloaded. They will then be driven to Stobart rail terminals around the country. Charged with delivering the latest batch is trucker Eddie Murphy. 35-year-old Eddie started driving for Stobart when he was 18 years old. It's no laughing matter having the same name as a Hollywood funny man. Every place I go to, they always slide me off about my name. And then they're like, oh, you know, the same colour as him. I've not got his money either, you know what I mean? Eddie's being drafted in from his native Scotland to play his part in Stobart's latest logistical challenge. Today's run will take him from Felixstowe Port, 90 miles inland, to Barking Rail Terminal in Essex, where he will drop the new containers. As soon as he's dropped one, he'll head back for another, a round trip of 270 miles, and he's only got 13 hours to do it in. The, the difference in this trip for my trips back home is usually the furthest we'll travel back home is maybe about 30 miles or so. It's very interesting. Now he's got to navigate the biggest container port in the United Kingdom for the first time in his 17-year trucking career. The dock covers an area of over 700 acres and has its own police, fire and ambulance services. Back home, there's nothing like this, so this is the biggest I've ever seen. Three and a half thousand trucks pass through this dock every day, so security is understandably tight and very high-tech. I've just put my hand in to get fingerprint recognition, and then we can start registering on the computers above. Eddie is travelling in convoy with local driver Chris Farmer. The computer tells them exactly which part of the port their containers are in. I'm just hoping it's my box that's on it. Number 269-0. It's not my box. I hope it's Chris's box and my box is next. Chris will just drive up, 
draw alongside the box, and machine man just giving a wee beep of the horn. The machine man now alone, like in the position. It takes Chris more than 20 minutes to get his trailer loaded, and every minute counts. A stationary truck makes no money. Should be pulling off any minute now, and then we're in next. Eddie pulls into position, eager to get on the road. We're going to drive underneath, get ourselves into position for the box, and then we're going to get loaded. After a 31-day sea crossing from the Orient, eagle-eyed Eddie checks the container is in order. The buffles are a bit slack, so I have to tighten them up before we go on the road. You're better off safe than sorry and make sure they're all tightened. The curtain sides of the container have to be taut, otherwise it could lead to major stability problems on the road for Eddie. The port is about as easy to get in and out of as Fort Knox. We to clear two gates coming in, and we to clear a police check as well. And to get back out, we have to clear two gates coming out. This is the last gate we're coming up to now. And that's us on our way. The clock's now ticking. Eddie's got to make the 180-mile round trip to Barking and back to collect a second container before his working hours run out. I have got six hours from now to be back to Felix, so the only worry I've got now is I've never driven in the A12 before, so I don't know what the road's like. Eddie's hoping to catch up with Chris before he hits the notorious London Orbital Motorway, the M25. We've got Chris in front of us. He must be going too slow as usual. We're just going to pass him. Keeps the Scottish boys getting all the work done for the company. So here we go. This is his big chance. There we go. It takes both drivers two and a half hours to get to Barking Rail Terminal. So they need a quick turnaround. Hopefully it is only a 20 minute turnaround in here. If it's any longer than 20 minutes, we could struggle. Eddie's watching the clock. The sooner he's unloaded, the sooner he can get back to Felixstowe. We've been given the green light to go and get ours off. So I'm just driving up now onto the pad underneath the crane, and the crane will take your box off. Luckily for Eddie, the overhead crane is on standby. The spreader can extend from 20 to 45 feet and is placed over the container by an operator. He lines it up by eye using the yellow lines as a guide. When the container is hooked onto the spreader, a series of lights lets him know when it's safe to lift. Thankfully, it all goes without a hitch. It's a slick process, and five minutes later, Eddie's ready to hit the road. First one down, and then one more to go. It's beginning to feel like Groundhog Day for Eddie. He's got to repeat his journey to pick up a second container, a 180-mile round trip. Sit down. I mean, let's get to Felix though as quickly as we can. It takes Eddie two hours to get back to the bustling port. That bit of deja vu now. Drivers are given a one hour window in which they can make their collections. Chris has already been and gone and got his last box. His time allocation was five o'clock. My time allocation is six o'clock. With time against him, Eddie needs a speedy collection, but his container is nowhere in sight. That's not out there. Oh, where's mine? Eddie goes to investigate. I just went over, and I've seen my box is three deep in the stack. With only three working hours left, Eddie's hopes of making his second run on time could be buried like his container. Instead of taking ten minutes, probably looking at half an hour. Just my luck. Find out later if Eddie's luck has run out. 260 miles north in Bolton, chilled driver Fiona Saltjack is having the day from hell. Seconded to a new depot, delivering to four stores in a town she's never been to with a trailer she's never used before. I've got the doors open, but I can't get the stuff off. And the icing on the cake, she can't get her first load off her trailer. Fiona's missing a vital bit of kit, the lead to power the tail lift. No, no one mentioned anything about having to need a lead or anything. With no lead, Fiona can't unload her trailer. Luckily, her planner has come up with a solution. 
there's a driver about five minutes away, so they're going to send him over. He's got a spare lead that we can use, and he can show us how to work this lift. Fiona breaks the news to the store manager. Um, they're sending someone over with a lead for about five minutes, he said. Fiona's overrun her allocated delivery slot. Would it be possible if you just moved over to the side so that um, we can get the next lot of deliveries in then while yeah. we're waiting? Right. OK, thanks very right. much. Let's go and move. Fiona's starting to realise that trucking love can be fickle. This trailer that loves me doesn't really love me anymore. <laughs> Fiona's concerned. She's got three more deliveries to make. In 15 minutes, we should be our second one, and that's clearly not going to happen. So um, we just got to sit and wait. Her patience pays off. Luckily, our damsel in distress is rescued from her trucking nightmare by driver Paul Tipton. Our knight in green armour has arrived. Back in the bay, Fiona carefully manoeuvres her truck into position. Basically, they haven't even told me that I've got a tail lift on. They've not showed me how to use it yeah. or anything. The crucial cable to power the tail lift may have arrived, but it's not all good news. <laughs> it's getting better and better by the minute. The bloody... <laughs> cable doesn't reach from the unit to the trailer. So I'm going to now try and <clears throat> put a slight bend in it. The cable is too short, so Fiona has to park at an angle to reduce the distance between the truck and the trailer. Fit. Shorted. Brilliant. Right. Fiona's used to delivering pallets of goods. These roll cages are a different beast altogether. And do they have brakes on them, really, things? Or oh, is it... No. No brakes on them. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> people wear it, show many cages. It's now 7.30, and the first roll cage finally makes its way off the trailer, an hour and a half behind schedule. So I just roll them on? Yeah. Oh, down we go. We've got to do this how many times? It's not even strapped together. <laughs> I don't want to push it too hard in case it all goes for ding. <laughs> There's a whole bunch more to get off. Fiona's up against it. With only seven and a half hours of her shift left, she's got to squeeze in three more drops and a 130 mile drive back to her home depot in Newark. This shorter 10 meter trailer is designed to be more maneuverable, perfect for city centre runs. It can be split into three compartments, each of which can be set to a different temperature, ranging from minus 10 to plus 20 degrees centigrade. It incorporates a mechanised tail lift, which can be powered from the truck's batteries by a detachable cable. The trailer costs nearly £57,000 and is one of only 12 in the fleet. Time's running out. Fiona's now been at her first drop for almost two hours. It's light. I don't even remember when that happened. <laughs> Fiona has three more deliveries left. Um, I don't even know if we're going to do these ones. I'm just going to ring up Witness now and find out what's going on. So, thank you very much. <laughs> oh my God, no, don't send her again. Something easy to work out. She says, I haven't unclipped them. Just write the times on. What time you got here? So it tells me now. <laughs> it was about four hours ago. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye. Fiona finally completes her drop. First drop of the day, two hours. Um, I'm just going to have to call witness now and see what they want me to do. You're going to hear me and go, oh, God, what now? <laughs> what now? I haven't left the first one yet. Hi, it's Fiona. Hi, uh, Well, do you really want to know? We've, we've only just done our first one. The phone call to her planner is brief. We're going to go to our next one and a driver is going to meet us there, solo. We're going to drop this trailer and he is going to carry on for us. 
it's nearly nine o'clock in the morning. With six working hours left, Fiona's got to get to her next drop, where a relief driver will take over the rest of her delivery so that she can drive 130 miles back to Newark before her hours run out. I can officially say I've never had a day like this. Coming up, will Fiona's trucking hell ever end? She's just not picking up reverse. Wheel spinning all over the place. And the ground crew at Stobart's London South End Airport hit the skids. This is a bit of an accident with the toilet service. A very special delivery has arrived at Felixstowe for the Stobart Rail Division. 270 custom-built curtain-sided rail containers. Driver Eddie Murphy is en route to collect his second container of the day, but he's in danger of running out of working hours. I have two and a half hours until my time is up, and it's going to be touch and go where I can get back to Barking tonight. At Felixstowe, the container Eddie's due to collect is nowhere to be seen. That's not out there. Where's mine? I'm just going to go out there now and see if I can find my box. This delay could be costly for Eddie. He held me up for about 40 minutes and said he should have only been here 10. So I've got to chap on a bit now. Well, me, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going now. But I'm going first. But just getting out of the port is proving a challenge. I've got two and a half hours to get there. And I don't know if I'm going to make it in time. I'll get a snack. Hey, where's the last gate? The Ranmere gate, wasn't there? I went the wrong way. That's the way in. Felixstowe is a massive port. The goods coming into Felixstowe supply 48% of the country's shops, and it handles almost 3.5 million containers a year. I was OK when it was daylight. A bit dark now. Weather took a turn for the worse, and I didn't know how we got out. Eddie's got two and a half hours driving time left. On a good run. It could take his own two hours, two hours and five minutes to get to Barton. We're going to be hitting a bit of traffic on the way back. We'll be struggling to get there. Pressure's on. And he's not even found his way out yet. I thought all the checks were done at the last gate, and this was just a gate where he could just leave right away. Obviously not. Summed up my day, really, isn't it? Finally, the great escape from Felix Stowe is on. Thank you. And time's not on Eddie's side. Has me just been given the all clear? Take me chat on and get back to Barton. Two hours and 15 minutes driving time left. It's going to be tight. Eddie hits the open road. It's 60 miles away from London. So, you've got to keep the foot down, keep going. The truck can only do a maximum speed of 56 miles an hour. But there's an unexpected bonus. That's the quietest I've ever seen, the M25. Thanks to clear roads and skies, Eddie reaches Barking in good time. There we go. Well, that's us made it now with 35 minutes to spare. But he still needs a quick turnaround so he can park up before his hours run out. Obviously, the depot's not as big as Felix, though. Easier to find your way around. You should be out here in hopefully less than 10 minutes. Barking may be compact and bijou as far as rail terminals are concerned, but the turnaround is fast and furious. Massive difference. A couple of settings, boxes off. Before he clocks off, Eddie's got just enough time to drive to a depot instead of spending the night in a lay-by. Bonus. Well, that's the job done for today. I'm going to be on my way now. Just enough time to get parked up, get my shower. As if delivering goods by road and rail isn't enough, Stobart are spreading their wings and now transporting people. In 2008, they bought London South End Airport. To date, they've splashed out nearly £100 million on the purchase and redevelopment. In a bid to bring it into the 21st century, they've extended runways, built a state-of-the-art air traffic control tower, a new train station, and they've nearly finished a passenger terminal, which is expected to handle a million passengers a year. We're experts at moving things from A to B. The reputation we have in haulage, it's just can put it over into airport. We are the full package, road, rail, sea and air. 
At the moment, Stobart Air employ 120 staff and behind the scenes are the airport's 24 full-time firemen. Heading today's shift is crew manager Brett Ford. He's been at Southend Airport for six years. As well as firefighting, the crews also have other duties, and not all of them are glamorous. Fired for the airman and Mike. Do the toilet service for us, please. The riding positions are as follows. Me, IC on one. Paul, you drive on one, please. Chris, monitor. Dave, with the fuel. Fireman Dave Brown doubles as the fuel supervisor. He's responsible for refueling aircraft and checking the fuel to make sure it's safe to use. People's lives at risk, you can't take a chance. There are four fuel tanks at the airport. It's got 14,000 litres of fuel left in it, in this tank. Next, Dave performs his daily dip. At the moment, we've got to do the QC checks over here to make sure the fuel's up standard. It's important to check for any impurities. Any water found in the fuel could freeze at altitude, blocking pipes, which could be disastrous. A water check on it. The fuel is drawn up from the tanks into a clear jar for a visual check. Make sure there's no water in there or any sediment built up the bottom. And then we withdraw this and if there's any water on it, it'll show up the colour. A five millilitre sample is tested in a water detector capsule. So that's nice. If that shows any speck of water, that go green. The darker it goes, obviously, the more water's in it. So we know that sample's OK to do. Fuel check over, and it's not only Dave who's doubling up. On the runway, the multitasking firemen are taking up their positions for an inbound flight. And fireman Mike's drawn the short straw. I'm on the uh, toilet service. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they don't need one because it is a bit of a dirty job. Normally, if you rush it kind of thing, it's sort of accidents can happen. It has happened before where uh, the connections come off and it just uh, completely soaked me. I had to have about five showers afterwards. It's all eyes to the skies. Uh, I hope to see it just coming in now. Two, four in. Right on time, actually. Following a textbook landing, the plane makes its way to the ground staff to be serviced. The pressure's on the firemen. They've got 20 minutes to get the flight ready to go out again. We've got to try and get this aircraft unloaded and loaded as quickly as possible. As soon as it's shut down the engines, and then everybody will pounce on the aircraft and try and do the quick and best turnaround uh, they can do. Brett heads to the hold to unload the incoming passengers' luggage while the plane is refuelled. Check our fuel load the skipper in a minute. They're going to connect, uh, refuel. Now we've got the baggage carts just coming into place to unload the bags. With the bags off, the plane is reloaded with fuel and baggage, but there's just one more thing left to do. Yeah, we've got toilet service. Uh, we've got Mike, you see, just over there. He'll be coming over in a minute. It's a dirty job, but... Someone's got to do it, though, haven't they? Let's that one like so. Make sure that is on, otherwise this will come off and then a load of uh, who and we will come off. <laughs> but it seems like Mike's spoken too soon. Just had a bit of an accident with the toilet service. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, uh, it uh, fell off the aircraft, making a bit of a mess on the apron, so I think we need to uh, clear that up as soon as possible. So it's left to Mike to get down and dirty. A bit of a uh, blue poo and wee and a bit of toilet paper. But I don't think my boss is going to be too happy. With time tight, this is the last thing they needed. Just have to clean it up. There's the cavalry coming now with the old bucket. Yeah. Okay. With the mopping up operation a success, the passengers bored without a whiff of what's gone on. We're struggling for time at the minute. We've got four minutes to get it out as what we'd call on time. We're just boarding at the moment. All the bags are now, now just finished with being loaded. Um, so it's possible. Flushed with success, the boys are glad their efforts haven't gone down the drain. Job in hand, it's mission accomplished for Stobart's multitasking firefighters. It's made by skin of our teeth. <laughs> 250 miles north in Bolton, chilled driver Fiona Saltjak is having the shift from hell. She's only completed one of her four scheduled deliveries. With time running out, her planners have arranged a relief driver to take over the rest of her drop. It's nine minutes to her location, and that's not allowing for morning rush hour and rogue pedestrians. Don't you stupid woman. Look at this, she's crossing the road with a bloody kid. Just randomly crossing wherever she pleases. And they wonder why they get hit. 
I'm about to scare the crap out of this car if he doesn't move. Getting to the drop is one thing. Getting to the loading bay is proving trickier. We're pretty much going in the way we should have come out, I think. Fiona's planner has provided detailed instructions as to how to enter the loading bay as requested by the stores. According to this, we now need to go and sit up here. But things aren't going according to plan, even though she's guided in by a warehouseman. On top of all this, uh, you have to reverse it as well. Oh, sorry, it's just that it says on the risk assessment sheet here, look, quite clearly the cab was in first. That's interesting, isn't it? We were following the risk assessment sheet that clearly showed a picture of the cab in first. And it's like that guy's just said you need to reverse them. Fiona's now got to perform a tricky blindside reverse on a garage forecourt against oncoming traffic trying to fill up on fuel. So now I'm just going to scare the pants off every driver there is around. Right, and then we can back this scale down that little hole, which isn't a problem. The reversing might not be a problem, but the warehouse man's leading her astray. Sorry, we need to drive in those first. We're right with us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry with these guys there. You know, put, so, put your test, test your skills. So, you want me to drive in? Sorry? Drive in. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry. I'll make sure you're clear on the back. Fiona has to manoeuvre around the garage forecourt again, but this time the queuing traffic's not as forgiving. Might as well just carry on today as we mean to. She's just not picking up reverse. And wheel spinning all over the place. The wheels on Fiona's cab can't get any traction on the garage forecourt, but they don't call her a chilled driver for nothing. It's never a dull day. <laughs> we should do it more often, look, we get all the excitement. <laughs> OK. It's nine o'clock and Fiona's <laughs> finally managed to get to her second drop two hours late. Oh, Welcome right. to the most terrible day I'm having. So right. Right. <laughs> but just when Fiona thought she was home and dry. Oh, no. I need to go move the lorry, don't I? I need to actually move my lorry and put it at an angle, otherwise the lead doesn't reach. Oh, God, all right. Then. So, yeah, trust me, this is only the second job and I've been up since midnight. <laughs> Fiona quickly repositions her cab closer to her trailer. Right, hopefully that's done the trick. <laughs> and hey, presto. <laughs> now I know what I'm blooming doing. <laughs> the second delivery is finally being unloaded, but how late is late? Late, 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 late. <laughs> With no hope of completing the last two drops, another driver has been dispatched to complete Fiona's deliveries. Surely nothing else could go wrong. Maybe the truck will blow up, we'll lose a tire or two. <laughs> but Fiona's finally started to lose it. Oh, it's going its own direction now. <laughs> God, these things! You need a licence for them! Oh, coming right at you. Hey, we're nearly there. Don't panic. Another delivery completed, and only three hours late. That's definitely it. That ain't going anywhere. Right, hey, <laughs> he's here. <laughs> Driver Jimmy Callahan arrives to relieve Fiona of her load. He'll be taking her trailer and finishing her last two drops. I'm going to get back to Newark as well. I'll pick up my trailer from Widnes. What time did you start? Midnight. Fiona hands over the troublesome trailer to her colleague. I was going to say something about women drivers, but it's not worth the hassle, is it? It's not worth the hassle. <laughs> Scratch his eyes out. <laughs> Can you close the door? <laughs> <laughs> All that's left is for Fiona to unhook the trailer and head off home. Do you want me to back it up, yeah? I suggest you get out of the bloody way now. <laughs> it's now up to Jimmy to fix it. I'll just finish off the owner's run. You know what I mean? So if I haven't got better things to do than to do air run as well as my own. But Jimmy's secretly proud to help out a damsel in distress. I'm Fiona's knight in green shine and armour. Fiona heads for home in a trailerless cab with her head still held high. Relieved that the nightmare shift is finally over. There's going to be no walk of shame. We won't have too many of these days, I hope. <laughs> Coming up, 
one Stobart spotter comes face to face with the trucker of her dreams. I'm no George Clooney. I'm just a low driver. Eddie Stobart's 2,000 trucks pound the tarmac 365 days a year. With the advent of a certain TV show, their drivers are almost as famous as the green and red trucks they drive. All these people here are waiting for Matt. I think the other drivers, you can give me an hand. <laughs> That's still got a massive queue. And there's one driver that fans can't get enough of. 34-year-old tramper Mark Dixon's become something of a living Stobart legend. I do find it very bizarre. I'm no George Clooney. Just a low driver. He was even raffled off as the top prize at Stobart's very own trucking festival. Number 281. Hooray! Hey. Well, perfect. Well done. Congratulations. Yay. Hope you enjoy. Are you going with Mark? Or... Yes, yeah, please. that's very good. <laughs> 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 Today, spotter Sam Burris from Essex is claiming her raffle prize, escorting her hero Mark on the delivery. Another day, another mile. Only difference is I've got a special guest with me today. Someone won a prize to uh, spend the day with me. My mum will want to spend the day with me. You get used to your own company. I can pick my nose and flick it. I can do what I want, sort of thing. With a, with a guest in my lorry, I, I suppose I've got to be a good boy and behave myself. Sam's in for a real treat. <laughs> but first, Mark has to hook up with his VIP guest. She's under the impression that she's going to meet us at a junction somewhere. Uh, but to make it all personal, we'll go to her house and pick her up. Getting a 54-foot truck and trailer down a residential street will be a bit much even for Mark Dixon. So he's ditched his trailer. Ding, dang, do. Now I've got to behave myself. So I can't pick my nose or I'll pick my ass or anything. <laughs> Sam turns up expecting a taxi to take her to a rendezvous with Mark. She's suitably impressed. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh my god. You alright? That's definitely a taxi service. Presents today. Ooh. Be your car, so you feel part of the team. Yeah. Yes, no bats on it. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoy your day. I'll do my best to entertain you. Yeah. It's safe to say that the element of surprise has worked. This is amazing. First of all, it's got Mark in it. <laughs> Get out of it. You're very, very, very lucky to be I in my cab. I'm very lucky. I can't believe I'm actually here now and that I won. So when you bought the raffle ticket, did you ever think you'd win? No. Not in a million years. I never win anything, so... And then proceeded to bounce around like a <laughs> lunatic, proclaiming, he's mine, he's all mine. From Sam's house, Mark and his VIP passenger are heading towards the Averley depot near the M25 to pick up his load. Once hooked up, they will be heading 120 miles north to Lutterworth in Leicestershire to tip and reload a trailer of soft drinks. Excited as Sam is to be in a truck with Mark Dixon, she soon spots something even more thrilling outside the window. Oh, there's a Stobart. <laughs> is, that, is that planned or something? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get that one. <laughs> Let's see, I'm deep one. in conversation. She's not interested in my bother about looking at the boots. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sam's first time in a Stobart wagon, and she's got a very important job to do. If I fall asleep, just wake me up. It's all right. All right, I'll just <laughs> shout very loudly again. Okay? <laughs> It's a clear run on the road, and 20 minutes later, the duo arrive at Stobart's Averley Depot to collect their load of soft drinks. Avid spotter Sam's clearly excited. Right, this is two minutes away now. You're at your first Stobart Depot of the day. Ooh! <laughs> Pen and paper ready. Pen and paper ready. First lesson for Sam, hooking up a trailer. You'll, you'll feel a massive bang in a minute. OK. <laughs> <laughs> But a big bang is the last thing on Sam's mind as she hot foots it to the treasures in the depot. She's seen a lot of lorries, you know, and she wants to get the names and numbers and I want to get a coffee. It's definitely a once-in-a-lifetime privilege that you're not going to get ever again. 
one loaded up lorry later. It's time to get back in the saddle. Okay, have you finished fanning about looking at lorries? <laughs> Yeah, I have indeed. Hitting the road with a trailer full of nearly 10,000 bottles turns the truck into a different beast. Sam settles back and enjoys being pulled by the legend that is Mark Dixon. I feel like I'm doing some work now, yeah. then. Yeah. I'm struggle a bit, Mark. But before they drop their load, 120 miles away in Leicestershire, Mark takes a slight detour. I basically now have just come off the motorway <laughs> and your first point of call. You see glass windows now, that there. Yeah, that is huge. Here is the glass house. <laughs> Based in Crick in the Midlands, the glass house is the near mythical Stobart HQ, which houses a small truck museum. Well, this is a glass house. Wow. Go from old to new. Yeah. I couldn't imagine doing my job in one of them things. God, no. No, no, no mud cars, that's no nothing. They, yeah, that's how they first started. Sam's smitten with the 1975 Atkinson Borderer, and she's very privileged indeed to find herself behind the wheel. I must admit, I've never got inside it. So I should put it in the That's it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> That's what you call proper old lorry. Okay. <laughs> so it all started. And just as Sam thinks life can't get any better, along comes another Stobart legend. Boss, William Stobart. Yeah, William Stobart. And Sam, how do you Sam, I believe you've been with him all day. I have, yes. You must be mad. Before they hit the road, there's just time for a quick photo op. <laughs> Thank you. You're, You're so welcome, Sam. You're welcome, Sam. Hope you have a good day. I will do. All right. Yeah. Cheers, William. There you go. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, neither was I. <laughs> I'm very much in shocking heaven. It's brilliant. It's not every day you get to meet the head of the company and shake hands with us. Next stop, Mark's Home Depot Crick for a quick refuel. This is where all my work comes out of, where I get told what to do. And as you can see, there's a lot of lorries planned out of here. But before she can get an eyeful of those big diesel bad boys, Mark ropes her into getting tanked up. You get out of there after about three seconds. I do. <laughs> Fueled up, Sam's soon up to her old tricks. It's way better than sex because no one else in the spotter's world can do this. So it's kind of like. <laughs> Back on the road on their 120 mile journey to drop their load in Leicestershire, Sam pops the big one. Do you think you'll get married? Yeah. <laughs> Mark Dixon get married. Oh, is that a no no? <laughs> You never know, one day. So I'll definitely marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no problem with that. For once, Sorry. Mark is gobsmacked. Right there, look. <laughs> As the happy couple's day of bliss draws to a close with a quick tip and reload, that's it. Easy as that. Case. Hey, simple. <laughs> Mark parks up to do what truckers do best. First way. have had an amazing day. Thank you so much for Good. everything. I aim to please. So what was, what was the best part? I think going to the glass house. Oh, not, not meeting me, then. <laughs> oh, of course you. Don't be silly. <laughs> Sam's had the trucking thrill of her life. She's been taken to places no other spotter has been taken, and all because the lady loves a raffle. Yeah, thanks for today. Thank you, all right. so much. Happy days. Happy days. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, it's trailer trauma for long-haul driver Aidan Doody. Very tight. This is not made for vehicles like this. Trucker Mick Leach gets that sinking feeling on his way to the docks. Oh, Monumental cockle. And there's late night drama for trucker Kevin Durkin on the graveyard shift. Gonna hang up the stairs and wish you Here we go. Here we go.